Hi everyone, I'm Becky and today we're going to be taking a look at infantile spasms. We will cover what infantile spasms are, how they are diagnosed and managed and what the prognosis is. Infantile spasms are a type of epilepsy syndrome that typically presents in infancy. In more than half of cases, infantile spasms are associated with an underlying pathology. The spasms are the characteristic seizure types seen in West syndrome. This syndrome is defined by a combination of infantile spasms with a classical EEG pattern known as the Hibbs arrhythmia, as well as developmental plateau or loss of previously acquired skills. Infantile spasms can also occur in relation to other conditions, such as periventricular leukomalacia, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, metabolic defects, and genetic syndromes. One third of children with tuberous sclerosis will suffer from infantile spasms. These children make up about 10% of the total of those with infantile spasms. However, in a significant portion of children who suffer with these seizures, the etiology is unclear. The underlying pathology is an important factor in determining the prognosis for the affected child. The typical age of onset for the spasms ranges from about one month old to one year old. They are characterized by a contraction phase followed by a more sustained tonic phase. The spasms are usually bilateral and symmetrical. They can be very subtle and appear like brief head nods and they can be triggered by a variety of things such as falling asleep, waking up or by eating. The seizures often occur in runs with up to 100 spasms happening at a time. During these runs, the child will become visibly distressed. An accurate diagnosis involves a combination of detailed descriptions of the episodes and an EEG. The classical EEG pattern of a Hibbs arrhythmia is more likely to be seen early on in the disease process. This Hibbs arrhythmia will show random high voltage spikes and slow waves of varying amplitude arising from multiple foci that vary over time. The background of the EEG is generally chaotic. During the diagnostic process, it is also important to consider an underlying pathology and examine to look for this. This will include things like a Woods lamp examination, which looks for the ash leaf macules that are seen in tuberous sclerosis one possible cause of infantile spasms. Other options include different types of hormonal therapy, including synthetic ACTH, also called tetracosetide. As previously mentioned, one third of children with tuberous sclerosis will suffer from infantile spasms. In these children, the first line treatment is vigabatrin. So in children affected by infantile spasms, they quite often have delayed development. Approximately 60% of infants who suffer from infantile spasms will go on to have epilepsy in childhood. And some severe epilepsy syndromes such as Lennox-Gastau can evolve from infantile spasms. As we previously mentioned, the underlying pathology is an important factor to consider in the prognosis of the condition as it will vary based on the etiology of the disease. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.